to all the learners welcome to cec lecture the topic of analysis is complex interdependence and analysis in this lecture we shall discuss and explain the concept of complex interdependence in international relations theory put forth by robert kuhan and joseph nye in this lecture we shall attempt to explain how the concept of complex interdependence is very important to understand the new directions and new dynamics that have emerged with reference to international relations theory as well as practice in this lecture we shall try to understand how the concept of complex interdependence how it is related to the international relations theory international order its points of debates with reference to neorealism and neoliberalism and most important how do we situate complex interdependence with reference to the world which has been defined by globalization to begin with when we talk about international relations international relations has a been the discipline that has been defined by wars and this also explains that when we look at international relations theory the states it's the state which is the main unit of analysis states are looked upon as rational actors in international relations when we look at the context of studying international relations namely looking at the world defined by first world war second world war followed by the end of the cold war in the early 1990s this context explains that statism as a ideology statism as a perspective has indeed has had a huge bearing with reference to the policy formulation as well as theoretical orientations of the discipline of international relations the realist the realism which has been one of the most important mainstream perspective in international relations realism has often been defined by 3s that is statism self help survival on the same line realists contend that state is the dominant actor in world politics and that violence military aspects are fundamental means by which states try to achieve their goals and further their interests what is essential here to underline here that the idea of interest has been seen with reference to power and domination the idea of goals has been seen with reference to survival in a self help system but one can also not ignore that the context of global politics has changed over time the world that was there at the end of the four first world war was different from the context of the world at the end of the second world war similarly the world at the end of the cold war was different the end of the first world war saw the rise of league of nations the league of nations owing to its own issues did not have a great future in global politics what we one finds here is that united nations emerged as an important post second world war international institution further what we find is that there has been rise of global apparatus to regulate global trade and finance the role of world bank international monetary fund world trade organization pres further presence of non state actors ranging from ngos to civil society important individuals non governmental organization all have a bearing today when we try to understand changing contours of global politics 
the picture that emerges then here is that globalization which led to increase in trade integration interrelations there were another impact with reference to it namely international relations became multi dimensional relations and like any concept in the public discourse international relations too came to be studied with the idea that there are complicated and contested realms in the same light the concept of complex interdependence was first brought into the fore by robert kyohan and joseph nye now it is often seen as the neo liberal critique of the realist view of the neo realist view with reference to how do we explain the world as pointed out approaches gives us the perspective to understand the world and with reference to understanding of international relations the realist discipline the realist perspectives were the main ideas to explain namely world was seen with reference to the idea that is a it is a power and war arena the concept of complex interdependence presented an alternative perspective with reference to understanding the global politics the concept of complex interdependence as we take our studies further it points out important things with reference to international politics what are that let's understand that it points out that states and their fortunes are inextricably tied together the concept of complex interdependence points out that there are various and complex transnational connections and interdependencies between states and societies and they are increasing further the concept of complex interdependence points out that use of military power and power balancing are decreasing yet they are important so what we see here that the concept of complex interdependence by pointing out that how states and their fortunes are inextricably tied together now we must try to understand these ideas in light of the contemporary developments in the world for example when we look at the issue of climate change ecological aspects we see that how nations need to act with collective solidarities further various and complex transnational connections and interdependencies are increasing we find out with reference we say take example that how today dimensions of security are just not military for example health security has emerged as a very important dimension of international security during the corona virus pandemic nations of the world got together to cater to the pandemic to work out mechanisms via cooperation so interdependencies between states and societies though the world was shut yet it did not decrease further use of military force and power balancing are decreasing they remain important though now this also can be substantiated from the fact that today the mechanisms of warfare have also changed the way warfare today is just not about military warfare has a bearing with reference to cyber attack pandemics narcotics other non traditional security dimensions amongst others further what we see here is as the concept of complex interdependence points out and we take reference to those ideas that the post second world war era world you know was a time when countries were becoming increasingly intertwined there was monumental growth in transnational cooperations and this has indeed blurred down what do we define as national and what do we define as international further there has been question on the traditional realist assumptions about the centrality of states in international affairs now this is substantiated by the fact that today there has been rise of non state actors 
टूडे द अरीना ऑफ ग्लोबल गवर्नेंस इज कंटेस्टेड वेर इन स्टेट एग्जिस्ट विद non state actors so what one finds here is with the rise of non state actors avenues of power bargain employment growth development is just not situated at the realm of the state today there has been questioning on the traditional realist assumption because one has to see that with the rise of say public private partnership both at national and international realms this has a bearing with reference to policy and theorization in international affairs too now kehan and nai did recognize that violence and conflict have not vanished together because you know when we again try to delve deeper into this idea violence has all wars has always been one of the primary focus of international relations because the idea to safeguard states interest with reference to the other the idea of safeguarding national interest which has always been understood in the military security sense has been primary importance in ir theory as well as practice but kyohan and nai recognize that violence and conflict no doubt have not vanished altogether but there are issues other than security that have gained significance that is when we take example for example international monetary relations another example to point global environment concerns so what we see here is because of all these changes in context day to day dealings of the states day to day workings of the respective nation states have more to do with promoting cooperation promoting cooperative economic interaction rather than just focus on military and security matters to state an important example here that how the concept of human security via the 1994 united nations human development report took the focus away from the state and made individual as the unit of analysis and with this it presented a much more broader idea of security wherein security in global relations cannot be just understood as military security security has a bearing with reference to ecology environment uh food security health security community security individual security amongst others so looking at these changes in contextual aspects also one gets the sense that what kyohan and nai recognize in their concept of complex interdependence that no doubt national interest with respect to saving the safeguarding the borders safeguarding the military apparatus is always sacred but however one cannot ignore that how day to day workings of respective nation states are also factoring in the need to promote cooperative economic agenda now it's very important as we are discussing complex interdependence that we must look into the distinction between interdependence and dependence while analyzing role of power in politics and also relations between international actors once again you know taking from the ideas that kohan and nai have presented that decline of military force as a policy tool and that there has been increase in economic and other forms of interdependence and this should increase the probability of cooperation amongst the states now as we are deliberating on complex interdependence we must understand that complex interdependence is characterized by three characters first we will read these three characteristics and then debate on them looking at and taking exam looking at recent examples first there has been use of multiple channels of actions between societies in interstate transgovernmental 
and transnational relations. Second, absence of hierarchy of issues with changing agendas. Third, decline in military force and coercive power in international relations. We all know as we you know, try to understand these three characteristics of complex interdependence that we are defined, we are living in a world which is defined by rampant development of information and communication technology. Now this information and communication technology, innovations, rise of new media, no doubt led to giving new dynamics to international relations. Further what we see both at bilateral, regional and multilateral forums and summits, nations are getting together to deliberate on agendas like climate change, artificial in intelligence, sustainability, gender equality amongst others. So what one finds here is that the idea of the world that was defined by hard power versus soft power, further idea of world that was defined by international versus domestic is somewhere getting blurred because today the ideas of boundaries further is being contested wherein the, because of the world which is defined by rampant communicative technological realms. Further with all this one finds that then use of coercion also loses its importance as a power currency in international relations. Dear learners, as we are debating on this concept of complex interdependence, we shall now try to underline its significance. Lots of questions emerge that is, why is this concept significant? One gets the sense that with the analytical construct of complex interdependence, and which is very important, it is a critique of political realism. The theorists Robert Kuhan and Joseph Nye, they have explored and also made us understand how international politics is changing with reference to complex interdependent interactions as well as rise of interdependence amongst the states. Further, you know, one gets the sense that the state-centric approach which has been one of the primary key focus as well as assumptions of realism is somewhere too simplistic for understanding of international relations. This approach of, of this concept of complex interdependence also makes us understand that just focus on statism, self-help, survival, military apparatus, somewhere it is inadequate in attempting to explain the distribution of power, power dynamics, global governance mechanisms within international system. Now as we are debating complex interdependence, a very important contextual process that has a huge bearing in the contemporary times with reference to complex interdependence is that of globalization. Let us understand some of the ideas here. Globalization signifies movements and exchanges of goods, people, services, capital, technologies all over the world. Now one of the most important impact of globalization here is that it has promoted and increased interactions between and amongst different regions, different people around the globe. Now globalization dear learners has different dimensions. Let's quickly take them one by one and also debate at how it has a bearing with reference to the ideas that are enshrined in the concept of complex interdependence. Economic globalization signifies intensification of economic interrelations around the globe. We have to see here that how today with rise of global markets, global trade and financial apparatus, Today there is rise of plethora of non-state actors, namely uh, international organizations, international financial institutions, multinational corporations, transnational corporations and these economic interrelations have a huge bearing 
with reference to domestic policies domestic domestic industrial policies of respective nation states political dimension of globalization you know gets our ideas towards how today there has been expansion of political interactions around the globe role of global governance for example in the realm of climate change in the realm of gender equality in the realm of technological development today there is rise of huge amount of ideas there is proliferation of summits of ideas of deliberative forums international organizations so what we see here is in the political aspect one finds that there are then question marks put forward on the idea that can it be only through the state that we can understand global relations further cultural globalization which refers to sharing of ideas meanings hobbies values perspectives around the world now with this rise of cultural globalization and its related issues namely standardization homogenization americanization further puts forward the aspect that namely can we understand power in just one perspective that is the military perspective further technological globalization technology we all know is a vital force in globalization and further technology is one thing that kept the world going even when the globe was shut going to the lockdown during the corona virus pandemic now within this technology also now there are power bargains namely from 2g to 3g to 4g and how the world saw that even during the trade war between the recent trade war between united states and china the world's two superpowers it was technology which was one of the most important arenas where the warfare was really being fought so what we see here is that once again the agenda is just not military so when we look at these various dimensions of globalization economic political cultural technological what robert kyohan and joseph nai wrote in their work power and interdependence you know where the book was written to construct a way of looking at world politics that helps to understand relations between economics and politics and patterns of institutionalized international cooperation while at the same time retaining key realist insights about roles that power and interest play in world politics so what we see here is that dynamics of globalization the question marks the trade mark the trade offs with respect to working of globalization too reaffirms that today international politics is too contested an agenda it cannot be just understood by mere reference to the state it cannot be reduced by to just focus on the military apparatus further as we are debating complex interdependence the debate between neo realists and neo liberal institutionalists becomes very important now neo realism and neo liberalism are two important approaches with respect to understanding international relations we all know that field of international relations theory has been dominated by great debates the first debate namely between the idealist and the realist perspective the debates between behavioral and the scientific and the non scientific methods the debate between the inter paradigm debate between three triads namely realism liberalism marxism and the debate between rationalism and reflectivism within this debate one can get that an important debate that one highlights is this neo neo debate as bailis and smith point out that neo realism and neo liberalism share many assumptions about actors values issues power arrangements in international relations theory they differ on many occasions but they also share many assumptions kenneth waltz you know in his work theory of international politics you know to attempt to add methodological rigor to the ideas of the realist school namely hans morgenthau's work of six principles of political realism waltz criticized realism as that was espoused by hans morgenthau that is it did not it was not scientific it did not have a theory neo realism attempts to have a scientific framework to realist understanding 
what we get here is that there are certain similarities both neorealism and neoliberalism they are positivist inquiries they take in state as a rational actor to add here an important critique that has been stated by Krautochwil namely positivism in methodology at the expense of substantive advancements neo neo synthesis signifies the phrase used in international relations to refer to the convergence of, of the neo realist and neo liberal schools of thought for the neo realist it's the state which is the primary and unitary actor in ir for neo liberals states are important but that should not be seen as the only actor in international politics one has to factor in non state actors too the neo realists argue that conflict occurs because of absence of order namely lack of centralizing authority that is anarchy neo liberalists stress that prospects for cooperation are constrained by anarchy but however they are not made impossible neo realists see conflict as paramount whereas neo liberals identify prospects for cooperation further with reference to gains that is absolute versus relative gains agendas or namely military versus others neo realists and neo liberals differ so what we see here is that global relations have witnessed huge transformation after the cold war era interstate relationships have emerged into international relations with individuals groups organizations complex in the context of their outcomes for individuals societies and governments also complexity of international relations no doubt has led to benefits but dear learners we must understand that at the same time it has given rise to new problems for people governments all over we hope the lecture complex interdependence and analysis presented you significant inputs and insights to study and prepare notes for the topic we look forward to positive encouraging feedback from you all thank you very much